Welcome to PA Harness Week, racing's fastest paced half hour, bringing you the sport of harness racing from the great state of Pennsylvania. I'm Heather Vitale, joined by Jess Otten. She is back. Yay! I missed you so much last week. I missed you guys last week. I'm so happy to be back. I know we have an action packed show ahead of us and I'm so happy you guys are here to join us for it. Now we do want to tell everyone we are at Harris Philadelphia shooting and that leads me to tell everyone that on July 4th there is going to be so much fun family entertainment here. There's patio games, there's food and drink specials, there's a beer garden. So we will remind you again later on in the show but keep that in your brain right now. First we'll check out the headlines. On today's edition of PA Harness Week, we put a spotlight on young driver Tyler Miller, who has some amazing racing DNA. Plus, for you novice racing fans watching our show today, we give you a lesson on understanding odds at the racetrack. And if you have the need for speed, you came to the right place. We'll show you the top races from Harris, Philadelphia, and the downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. It's all coming up next on PA Harness Week. We're kicking off our action today with our race of the week from Harris, Philadelphia. This is from Sunday, June 27th, and it's a great field of conditioned pacers. They're vying for a purse of $13,000. Now in here, you want to check out the favorite. It's number five, the best in show, a winner of over 600 grand, who has a mark of 148. The second choice on the board is number eight, Vettel, who picked up a win in his last start and is taking a jump up in class for this one. Best in show by one, Harambe Deo attacks now. The wing front stub around wide of Vettel. There's still a strong pocket presence third. A length back decision day moves up. Picks up length developing cover fourth. Billy Badger looks to shoot the gap now. Three quarters, 121 and three at 27 third. Top of the stretch, best in show. Moving up three wide now, decision day. Harambe Deo starts to labor in between rivals. Vettel he is sitting a looser pocket. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Best in show. Vettel up the inside. Outside decision day tries to sustain. Mid stretch, best in show. Vettel, decision day. Best in show, down to the finish, best in show game. There were a trio of levers in this upper level condition pace. It was Vettel and Best in Show who battled it too wide through that first quarter of 26 and 3. Best in Show did the give and go, moving to the front with one lap to go. He got a second quarter breather, and when Miller popped the plugs, going up the backside, turning away a first over game horse, and fighting off horses deep in the stretch to score in 150 and 1. Four Hall of Famers, David Miller and Linda Toscano. Vettel won the place photo, and decision day got the show though we will have more on best in shows damn put on a show later in the show so you want to be sure to tune in for that yes and now we are still going to keep it here right at harris philadelphia again from sunday june 27th more top pacers now this purse is fifteen thousand three hundred dollars your favorite in here is the one to nine shot number six true lou looking for a win after three seconds and two thirds in his last five outings and also getting some attention is number five, Bombshell Hanover, who hasn't been in a paramutual event since March, but is coming off a couple of good qualifiers. Three quarters, 122 and four, 27. Third quarter for Bombshell Hanover, hounded by the favorite True Lou. Three lengths back, Captain Groovy into third. Viper is fourth, top of the stretch. Dexter and Bombshell Hanover, Yannick and True Lou, they are noses apart as they straighten away. Bombshell Hanover digs in, True Lou on the outside, still trying hard. Two lengths back, Viper third. Bombshell Hanover's fighting off the favor. True Lou at the edge of the tote board. And Bombshell Hanover wins by three widening. Bombshell Hanover made.
made the lead easy off the gate from post five to set some pretty steady factions on the front. And it wasn't until past the half when the favorite True Lou moved first over to challenge Bombshell Hanover. And he was turned away as Bombshell Hanover found more, drawing away to score in 150 and four. Dexter Dunn was in the bike, and that was a new lifetime mark for the son of some beach somewhere. And he is trained by Josh Green. True Lou was second, and Viper finished third. It's 4th of July weekend, and we know that you're going to see a lot of fireworks, and you're going to say, ooh, and ah, a whole lot. But right now, Jess and I want you to say, OMG. <laughs> so we're taking it back to Sunday, June 27th at Harris, Philadelphia for this pacing event going for $16,200. We know you'll see a lot of explosions in the sky this weekend, but wait till you see this bombs away payoff on the track. Sam the three light toes by two lengths. Alvar Hanover races second. Lions King thirds to that sizable gap. Mike Zetam fourth with less than three eighths to go. Jack Shadow angles to the outside. Fimp still has about eight lengths of work to do, though. Last gunfighter was six by two, racing in seventh full send. Some bad dude trails the field. Sand between my toes, first to three quarters and 120 and one. Leads it by a length. Alvar Hanover races second. Outside moving up third down comes Lions King. They come to the top of the stretch. Sand between my toes. Lions King on the outsides up to the wheel. Out to the inside, over Hanover third. They straighten the way for the stretch drive. Sand between my toes, set down. Outside, Lions King is grinding. Inside, over Hanover third. And from far back, gaining ground. Here comes the last gunfighter at 50 billion to one. Last gunfighter picks up the pieces. There was lots of action when the gate folded, but the 2020 Breeders' Crown champion, Sand between my toes, and Dexter Dunn wanted the front end, but they had to work for it through a 25 and four first quarter. There was a trio of them that that separated from the field in the middle half. Last gunfighter was 11 lengths off the lead at the three-quarter pole and paced his last quarter in 26 and three, scoring in 149. That was the fastest mile of the day. And not only was the weather hot, but so was the payoff because OMG, he paid $104.20 to win. Todd McCarthy was in the bike for trainer Joe Colombo, and it was Sam Between My Toes who finished second and Lions King who got it for third. Didn't have it, but you know what? We're going to break time. Maybe I'll study the program for, <laughs> for the races going on on Sunday, July 4th, and maybe I'll score big. A lot of maybes there. <laughs> anyway, it is break time, like I said. So when we come back, we will meet driver Tyler Miller, who has quite a family tree in harness racing. And we head to the Poconos for exciting action on the red clay. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Top of the stretch, Delishka hoping to pace out the clock here. Get back to the feeling of Mohegan Sun Pocono. In the world of standard bread racing, only one name is synonymous with this kind of success, this kind of history, this kind of greatness, this kind of legacy, and this kind of unparalleled promise for tomorrow. Proud of our past, excited about our future. You know the name, that one name, Hanover, the greatest name in harness racing. Welcome back to the show. You are watching PA Harness Week, racing's fastest pace half hour, and we're about to put somebody in the spotlight. When it comes to success on the racetrack, being well-bred and having some good genes can be very important. And that doesn't just pertain to our four-legged athletes. Jess has a story about a rising star in the sport who has inherited talent and also a drive to win. As mentioned before on the show, the love for Santa Breads is passed on from generation to generation. And that's exactly the case for the Millers. Or 
as some of you may know them as Team Orange Crush. And this time, I'm not talking about Andy and Julie Miller. I'm talking about their 23-year-old son, Tyler Miller, who is in his fourth year of driving. Born and raised in the harness racing business, were you one of those kids that always wanted to go to the barn and be around the horses? Uh, I always love going to the track and watching the races and just being around the horses. They're such fun loving and that's such a personality them. It's just so much fun, much fun to be around. I was working for my mom and trained horses at the barn and at our stable and then just decided to try out in the amateurs to get some experience and just make a hobby of it and have some fun with it. When you come from a harness racing family, it's hard to imagine your life any other way. And for Tyler Miller, it's that way too. But he continued his education past high school. You have a bachelor's degree from Ryder University. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I graduated with a bachelor's from Ryder University in business administration. Uh, it was a great experience and I use it every day. The education's uh, vital, so uh, we really pushed him to finish college. What's the conversation like with Tyler when he came to you and was like, Dad, I want to be a driver? Well, obviously I was thrilled about it and uh, really proud of him wanting to follow in our footsteps, you know, but uh, it's a tough grind, especially on the East Coast. There's a lot of drivers around, but so far he's uh, exceeded all expectations and he's doing a really good job. Mike's Powerhouse almost there up the inside. Dalton did it. They come down to the finish. Mike's Powerhouse hangs in there. Give us something you took away from your college education and experience. Uh, just the ability to deal with si different types of situations and different types of problems and learning how to deal with different types of conflicts and how to resolve them. What is it like to you when you look across the, the gate, when you're leaving the gate, you see guys like your father, David Miller, Tim Tietrich, Dexter Dunn? Oh, it's the best. Just to be able to be out there with some of the Hall of Fame guys and some of the best guys in the business, it's very learning experience and a great advantage. They say sending your kid off to kindergarten is one of the toughest days in your life. What was it like sending Tyler out on the racetrack for the first time? Obviously, we were nervous, but uh, you know we had trained a lot with him and uh, realized that he knows what he's doing out there. And uh, you know he just kind of took the bull by the horns and uh, and ran with it. You've come a long way in your short driving career. What are the, what does the future look like for Tyler Miller? Um, I like to just be wherever I can be and take advantage of every opportunity. I love that so much, Jess, and love the Miller family and really looking forward to seeing Tyler flourish on the racetrack. And I love seeing the younger generation getting so involved in the business because we are the younger generation. It's so nice to see them excel, a rising star on the move. now time to head to the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono for this race of the week. We've got some trotting action from Saturday, June 26th. The purse is $15,700 and here are the favorites number five and it's Rich and Miserable who we just saw winning on last week's show and check out number six, Burn Notice, returning to Pocono after a win and a second up in Tioga. They come to three quarters, 125 and four, much faster on the back there, 27 and four in Archbald, all of a sudden losing steam after all Paul right up alongside and now burn notice goes second over King Alfonso and Poppy Hanover trying to rally top of the stretch after all Paul slight lead on Archbald Poppy Hanover is sneaking through on the inside outside burn notice is right there after all Paul slight lead burn notice trying to get him at the line burn notice the complexion of the race changed a bit Heather when the favorite rich and miserable left the gate making a break and it was Archibald who left hard out of the gate to make the front then tap the brakes in the second quarter that left burn notice in the pocket and he was able to scoot out around the last turn fanning off of his cover scoring in 154 and three Matt Kaylee was in the bike for Mike Dieters after all Paul was second and Pappy Hanover finished third okay we're gonna keep it right here at the Pocono 5 8 mile oval this is from Sunday June 27th and now we are bringing in the Lady Pacers. They're going for a purse of $11,200. We want you to take a look at number five in here, Abigail Dawn, getting the most play at the windows after winning last time out. And then there's number three, Delishka, who goes to post for trainer Darren Tannehill, who has been on fire lately. And still, it's a slight lead for Delishka. Three quarters, 124 even, 27.
seven and two third panel. Delishka repelling the charge of uh, Sweet Rock and Geo, who's still trying to come on. Abigail Dawn in the pocket, further back to Shura, looking good. Top of the stretch, Delishka hoping to pace out the clock here. Abigail Dawn takes aim in the passing lane and is gaining here. It's Delishka slight lead. Abigail Dawn is ahead away. Delishka holding true. Delishka finds a way for Matt Kikaley. Delishka was quick off the gate from post three and made the front through a 26 and two first quarter. And from there, Kikaley was able to rate the pace, turning away the favorite who was first over up the backside and dug in through the wire, stopping the clock in one 51 and four. Matt Kikaley was in the bike for trainer Darren Tannehill. Abigail Dawn was second and Sweet Rock and Gia finished third. All right, we're gonna keep showcasing those lady pacers again from the Downs of Mohican Sun Pocono, again from Sunday, June 27th. This purse here is $13,000, and the favorite is a number two. That's crazy cute, who's getting the most respect on the tilt board because she picked up a career best win the last time she was in this class. Then there's number four, she can dance. Isn't getting a lot of betting support, but she is coming off a really nice win. Prairie Western gal first over for Buter. She comes up to within three and is gaining quickly. A little bit further back to Lucky Artist and the trailer she can dance. But still the lead belongs to Crazy Cute. Three quarters, 123 and three, 28 even third panel. Crazy Cute on top. Outside Prairie Western gal. April Ava still locked in the pocket a length back. Caviar Cherie trying to come up. Late move now from she can dance out wide. Top of the stretch. Crazy Cute by a length. April Ava in the passing lane coming up deep at the pylons. Can Heavy Art Cherie is squeezing through. Outside, she can dance, steaming down the center of the track. Crazy Cute still on top, though. She can dance one last lunge, and I think she can dance. Three of the six mares left the gate, so there was plenty of action going into that first turn. It was April Ava who captured the front end before Crazy Cute quarter pole moved, and she set the tempo from there. She can dance with saving ground up the backside before moving three wide around the last turn. That got her momentum going with a 27 and three kicker at the end of the mile. She can dance, got up in time to score in 151 and four. Marcus Miller was in the bike for Jose Godinez. Crazy Cute was second and April Avra finished third. All righty, folks, it is break time once again. When we return, we have a special feature from the Pennsylvania Horse Racing Association on understanding odds at the racetrack. And our blast from the past really puts on a show. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Here goes, put on a show. She's not waiting around. Tim Tietrich pushes the button. History. It's written by winners. At Diamond Creek Farm, we're breeding champions and rewriting the history books. Diamond Creek Farm, a cut above. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. So you're headed to the track, but you got some questions about racing odds. You know, like how much cold hard cash you gonna win with that ticket you're gonna cash, right? All right, we've got Donnell Mock. That's going to give us a great educational feature from the Pennsylvania Horse Racing Association. Hi everyone, I'm Donnell Mock, and today I'm going to teach you how to understand odds at the track. Understanding the odds can seem overwhelming at first. An important distinction to make right off the bat is that unlike blackjack, with horse racing, you are not betting against the track. You are betting against each other. This is called paramutual betting. Because of this, payouts are determined by the number of winning bets in each of the individual pools. The higher the odds, the higher the payout. When you open up a track program, the first thing you'll see is the morning line odds. These are determined by odds makers based on past performances and any other relevant factors that might affect the outcomes prior to post time. When wagering opens on a race, you can find the odds displayed on electronic tote boards and TV screens around the track. As bets continue to come in from around the world, the odds on the board will update roughly every 40 seconds. Since the odds are not fixed, they will continue to adjust until the moment the gate opens for the race. The odds are displayed on what winning returns will be based off of a $1 wager with very limited exceptions. So a winning $1 bet on 10 to 1 odds would pay out $10 plus your original dollar. 
A $2 bet on the same odds would pay out $20 plus your original $2 and so on. In each race, you'll see there's a favorite. This is simply the horse with the most dollars bet on them to win. Therefore, they will have the lowest odds. Statistically, the favor tends to win about 30% of the races. Now that you understand the odds, you can more accurately assess the risks and rewards associated with your bet. Enjoy the race. To learn more about horse racing and wagering, visit penhorseracing.com. Great feature. If you're not learning, you're not growing, right? And Donnell Mock did a great explanation for that feature. We want to thank Donnell and also the Pennsylvania Horse Racing Association and Ashley Eisenbeel. Thank you guys so much for that feature. It's that part of our show when we want to jump into a time machine for our blast from the past. Now, earlier, Jess did mention put on a show, and we are going to see that sensational filly in her 2010 Breeders' Crown from the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono. Nasty bit of pacing on the front end here now for put on a show. Her lead is about a length. Rock and Soul has worked out the pocket trip, and she's content to stay there. First over move there for Kenny, Cammy, and Pierce. She's within a length and three quarters. Boxed in there, fourth is McDonald with Western Silk. After that, higher and higher in Northwest Hanover. Three quarters, one 22 and 2, 27 and 1 there, hung up on the backside. It's put on a show. She's out front by a length, still lurking in the pocket. Rock and Soul, Kenny Cammy is fading third. Top of the stretch, put on a show. Now Tietra going to work. Rock and Soul out of the pocket is chasing and gaining. Put on a show, trying to hold off Rock and Soul. Put on a show to the line. Put on a show. A show and Tijik were able to get away third off the gate and then he quarter pull moved and that made him able to rate the pace and boy was she able to put on a show from there. Literally Tijik kept her on task in the stretch and she dug in to win in 150 and 1. As mentioned Tim Tijik drove put on a show in that 2010 Breeders Crown final. Chris Ryder was her conditioner and Heather had a chance to catch up with and chat and reminisce about the amazing mare put on a show. She retired with 2.4 million 147 and 3 was her Record. She made history in time and earnings. What kind of qualities made her so extraordinary? She was just like, had a terrific physique. She was big and rangy and had a lot of speed and uh, you could use her in a race, you'd keep going and she was just, you always knew every week you could rely on her. You know, she just never went a bad race and she was, you know, she had so much ability, she dominated her opposition and you know, that made it, you know, that's why she won so many races. I hope you guys have your thinking caps on because Jess is going to make you work today. All right. What's our trivia question, Jess? My trivia question for you guys is who is the other horse besides Niatros to win the Pacer of the Year Award at the ages two and three? And I'll give you a hint. After his tremendous racing career, he now stands as one of the top stallions here in the great state of Pennsylvania. Okay, I'm gonna admit, I already know the answer. I'm not telling you guys, all right? Only because I fangirled this horse his whole career, okay? Um, you know what, though? Think about it right now because we're taking our break. We're gonna get the answer, and plus our very own superstar driver, Tim Tietrich, gets inducted into the Harness Racing Hall of Fame this weekend. We've got the 411 on that. More on the other side. Get back to the feeling of Mohegan Sun Pocono. It's Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. It's Niatros by four, and he's going away. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, a place where heroes come to life, preserving harness racing's treasured past while promoting its exciting future. And now get ready to harness your excitement with the thrill of Harness Racing's 3D Simulator. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame now offering free admission. Bigger, better, bolder than ever.
Welcome back to PA Harness Week. I'm Heather Vitale, joined by Jess Otten, who is going to give you the answer to the trivia question. My trivia question for you guys this week was what other horse other than Niatros won Pacer of the Year at the ages two and three? And the answer is Captain Treacherous in 2012 and 2013. And since we are on the subject of Captain Treacherous, I don't know if you guys remember last year if you were watching the show. I told everybody that one of Captain Treacherous's standout daughters, her name is Treacherous Rain, okay, they flushed an embryo out of her, put it in a surrogate mare, all right? So here is the update. Oh my gosh, they had the baby. <laughs> oh, so exciting. The sire is a better wish. This baby is so absolutely adorable. Now they did this, by the way, because of course they wanted Treacherous Rain to continue racing last Last year, all right. So you know, you can't race when you're pregnant, uh, barefoot and pregnant, right? <laughs> so uh, congratulations uh, to all the connections. The horse, by the way, was born in New Jersey at Concord Farms. So uh, proud, happy, mommy, daddy, better's wish, treacherous rain. I'm just happy for everybody. We love that you are tuning into the show, but we really want you to come out and watch the racing live. There is nothing like it. So let me give you the deets on that. We'll start with the downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. The live schedule is Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday, post time 1230. Sunday, the post time's 5 p.m. And at Harris, Philadelphia, the live racing schedule is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, post time's 1225 p.m. Sunday post time is 12.40 p.m. And of course, we want to make sure you know where to make your wagers online. For Harris, Philadelphia, the website is pabets.tvg.com. And for the downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, the website is ibetmohegan.com. And don't forget, we offer free program pages. You can find those at phha.org. Right at the top of the homepage, you can't miss it. So what is trending? Well, I will tell you this, that July 4th, the Hall of Fame inductions are happening at Goshen, New York. All right, now, Jess and I are going. Yes, we are. Um, Tim Tietrick's going to be there. He's getting in the Hall of Fame. We love Timmy T, the bionic man. Now, if you guys can't make it, that's okay, because you can watch the induction ceremony streamed by the USTA, the United States Trotting Association, on their Facebook page as well as their YouTube channel, so check it out. And if you want more information about the Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, you've got to go to their website, harnessmuseum.com, because it's actually a really great place to visit during the summer. I'm so excited to make this trip up with you to Goshen Saturday night after the races and spend all of Sunday watching races, going to that Hall of Fame dinner. Congratulations to everybody who's getting inducted. But for now, we want to make sure you guys stay social with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Facebook is at Harness Week. Twitter is at PA Harness Week. And of course, you can find all of our content on our YouTube page at PA Harness Week as well. Okay, it's really important that you guys know those handles. Why? Let's tell them, Jess. Right here, we love our sunglasses, okay? Um, I'd wear these 24 hours. Actually, they're really comfortable. And so if you want a pair, there's contests every Monday on our social media, Twitter, and on our Facebook page. So if you want to get a pair of these for yourself, go on Monday for the contests. And um, yeah, every week it's different. You will love these so much. And uh, yeah, we have a girls trip this weekend. <laughs> we will show you a little bit like we did Vegas when we were there, maybe 50%. I mean, we can't, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, okay? All right, guys, love you so much. We're signing off for myself, Heather Vitale, and Jess Otten. We will see you next week.